Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Niantic Community Church, where no matter who you are and no matter where you are on life's journey in the sanctuary or in the Zoom room or uh, somewhere in the state of Connecticut or somewhere outside the state of Connecticut, you're welcome here. Welcome to NCC, where community is literally our middle name. So let's uh, let's wave to the people in the Zoom room. Zoom room people, you want to wave at us? Hope you're enjoying your coffee, whatever you have. It's good to see your faces. Wonderful. Well, if you're new to our community, we extend to you a special welcome. We're so glad that you're here. And if you're new, we've got a great website, Facebook page, we've got an Instagram account, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of ways to get connected with us. But I do recommend the Wednesday note. How many of you um, receive the Wednesday note? It's pretty good, right? It's really been good uh, since Cassie came and um, did the whole redesign, so it's been awesome. So thanks to Cassie, and thanks to all of you for reading and keeping in touch. Um, I don't have a lot of announcements, but I do want to call forward Kathy Leindecker. As she's walking up, any announcements for the good of the whole or from the chat room? Speak now or forever hold your peace. No? Okay. Take it away, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Because I do have a lot of announcements. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, let's do order with business first, okay. So I don't know about you, um, but I'm having trouble keeping track of the meetings that are coming up. You've been seeing notices coming out. So I thought I'd be the NCC coach and give you a rundown of the playlist, just like um, Coach Cora did last night for the Red Sox. <laughs> Gotta put in a plug. Um, okay. So uh, coming up today, so we have a lot of things happening, uh, a lot of changes being discussed. And I really want to encourage all of you to, to be able to participate in these discussions because we are making plans, making changes, and it's an opportunity for this community of faith to discuss together and hear each other's voices as we move forward. All of these documents that are coming out to you are not written in stone yet. This is why we're having discussions, so we can hear from you. We've made the proposals, we've made the drafts, we want to hear your feedback so we can move forward and come up with what's best for the congregation. So today at 11, we have an opportunity to do a virtual, totally on Zoom, um, the, the invitation should have come out this morning, to discuss the vision and mission statement that will be voted on next Sunday at the 1030 hybrid meeting. Do you need me to repeat that? Um, it's, it's confusing, but hybrid, hybrid means we'll be here in the sanctuary as well as offering it on Zoom to again discuss and then vote on the vision and mission statement, which you should have the documents. They've been sent out electronically. If you need them, please contact me or Cassie or any one of the officers can get a message to me and I can get them to you. After that, we have several opportunities to discuss the changes to the Constitution that are being proposed, changes to the prevent the way our um, church governance is going to be run, um, something that's been in the works for a long time, and we really want to hear, again, your feedback. So um, the Wednesday note is a great place to catch up on this information, as well as um, Cassie's been sending out uh, information on Friday mornings as well. So hopefully everybody's getting this, but I'll run it down. On October 31st, we'll have a hybrid meeting again here and on Zoom to discuss the constitution changes. We're gonna offer another opportunity on November 7th, which will be totally virtual um, via Zoom during the faith forum time at 11 to give people time to go home and then sign on as well if you're here for worship. And then on November 14th, we'll have a constitutional a congregational meeting to um, vote on those revisions. After discussions and revisions to, after those have been made, we'll present a final draft for voting. So again, uh, you'll hear more about this. We really just want everyone um, to be able to participate and know what's going on. Okay. If you have any questions, come to me. So then now the fun stuff, we've got church merch. 
And um, maybe you can't see, I'm not sure where the camera's best to see um, the shirt that I'm wearing. We have multiple colors of t-shirts, um, long sleeve shirts. I think there's a sweatshirt, a bag. They are coming, um, they are available now on um, a website called um, bonfire.com where you can sign in and order yourself directly. In early November, we should have them available in the office. You can contact um, Cassie to purchase them. They're not very expensive, and some of the proceeds go back to us for that. And the best part is now we have um, mugs, church mugs. These are handcrafted by one of our newest members, a recently joined member, um, uh, Gina, yes. <laughs> Let me just make sure I have a right name. Um, Gina Rubin, she's a potterist, and she's been making these for us, a small um, non-handled mug and then a, a larger mug. Um, the larger mugs are $30, the smaller mugs are 20. 40% of those proceeds come back to us as well. So we're really excited. These will be available in the office, and I think also online, I'm not sure. That's one piece of information I'm not absolutely sure of, so you can investigate. So that's being rolled out this month, and we're really excited about that. And hopefully we can wear our t-shirts when we do. I, I ordered these um, for the event on Main Street last weekend, but they came in Saturday while we were down there, so <laughs> I couldn't wear them. <laughs> If, if there's any questions, come see me afterwards. Thanks. So we've got we, we've got everyone covered for coffee. Um, if you want a soft T-shirt, we've got those. Um, so they're really they're really neat, and I've ordered mine in pink, of course. So anyway, um, can't help myself. Thanks, Kathy. Um, why don't we uh, continue? By taking a deep breath, you want to, you can close your eyes. Every single one of us has brought um, our lives into this room, people we love and care about. And we ask God that we might receive in this time of worship anything that we need for our own nourishment, growth, healing, for our life. Deep breath in and out. You can open your eyes when you're ready. And you're, if you're in the sanctuary, you can rise as you're able to in body or spirit. If you're in the Zoom room, maybe you want to stretch a little bit. We're gonna sing um, in the Taze style. Taze is a community in France, monastic community in France, known for its style of music. And you're going to hear us singing it again and again. And the idea is that the music moves from your head into your heart. So the choir is going to sing it through once, you're welcome to hear and then to join in whenever you're comfortable. So let's sing together. Sing praises, all ye peoples. Sing praises, all ye peoples. Sing praises to the
say amen. I promise you that one of those songs will be in your head by the time you leave. You're welcome. That music is also good for opening up the heart. We can be so much in our heads. How many of you can be in your heads a lot of the time? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But God usually has um, easier access to us through our hearts. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to read a scripture this morning from Mark chapter 10, 35 to 45. This is from the message, which is a paraphrase of the Bible. So if you hear a language that's a little bit more modern, it's just a translation, essentially. And see if you can identify with James and John. See if you can identify with them. So James and John, Zebedee's sons, came up to Jesus. And they had a request. They said, teacher, we have something we want you to do for us. And Jesus says, what is it? I'll see what I can do. Arrange it, they said, so that we will be awarded the highest places of honor in your glory. One of us at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said, you have no idea what you're asking. Are you capable of drinking the cup I drink, of being baptized in the baptism I'm about to be plunged into? Sure, they said, why not? Jesus said, come to think of it, you will drink the cup I drink. You will be baptized in my baptism. But as to awarding places of honor, that's not my business. There are other arrangements for that. When the other 10 heard of this conversation, they lost their tempers with James and John. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. And he said, you have observed how godless rulers throw their weight around. Is that true, y'all? You have observed how godless rulers throw their weight around. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their heads. It is not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve and not to be served and then to give his life away in exchange for many who are still held hostage. So may we hear in these words, words of power and truth this morning, amen? Amen. And now let us pray to hear a good word from my words and most importantly, um, from the spirit speaking in your hearts today and among us. 
So if you would, please close your eyes and let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of us, may they give you joy, O oh God. You who strengthen us day by day and you who lead us, if we're paying attention, day by day into new and abundant life. Amen. Well, like a lot of kids when I was younger, I said and believed a lot of idealistic things. How many of you were idealistic when you were younger? How many of you are idealistic now? <laughs> Some of us still are. Well, when I was younger, I was really idealistic. And sometimes my mom would say when she was finished listening to me, she would say, well, let's now go back to the real world. <laughs> let's go back to the real world. I wanna to say to you that it's very easy to stand in judgment of James and John and to pretend that we don't care or have to care about status and privilege and power. In other words, the real world. But that is the world that James and John lived in, or at least that's the world out of which they asked their question to Jesus. They want Jesus to, you know, fix things up really nice for them. How many of you asked Jesus to fix things up real nice for you, right? <laughs> they want the nicest seats in glory. I'm not even sure they know what that means. And I think, you know, we could roll our eyes and wag our fingers at James and John, who are probably asking what other people are thinking. Aren't they essentially asking, they're calling shotgun, right? Yeah, aren't they calling shotgun for the kingdom of God? <laughs> I think that's why the disciples are mad. How dare you ask for what we want? But let's not judge them as silly or foolish because they live in the real world, don't they? They live in the real world and their real world was all about status, power, patronage and privilege. Well, thank God we don't live in that world anymore. <laughs> How little things change. Because don't we live in a world where status matters, where success counts, and where the accumulation of wealth is still touted, still touted as the most important endeavor of our lives? That is the real world. But I don't think that has to mean that we live by its rules. We can live in two worlds at once, and I think as Christians we have to. We can live in the real world. Everybody put quotation marks around the real world. And at the same time, we can walk a different path. And I want to say this morning that that path, that path is the alternate way that Jesus invited his disciples to walk, where the way up is the way down. Can you say that with me? Where the way up is the way down. The way up is the way down. What in the world does that mean? Well, Richard Bohr, who's one of my favorite current theological thinkers, says that the way down usually involves two things. It involves suffering and it involves love. Now, the first path, which is suffering, is one that we do our very best to avoid. How many of you try to avoid suffering on a daily basis? <laughs> I just stubbed my toe this morning and I thought suffering with a capital S, right? <laughs> I have not yet met a single person, young or old, who hasn't had some acquaintanceship with suffering. How many of you have never suffered in your whole life? But do you have to search for suffering? Most of us don't. It usually finds us. It usually finds us. Loss, illness, poverty, the suffering that comes from not living true to who we are. Suffering itself is a baptism in vulnerability. 
It can be harsh and difficult, the world at its most cruel. But I think that the pathway of suffering as the way down is the way up is that God invites us to find God there because God is there in the most tender of places. How many of you have met God in your suffering? And somebody's suffering right now, right? It's, part, it's really part of the human condition, right? Someone wants to be fed. Don't we all want to be fed? Amen? I have to say that, you know, I was thinking about this topic, <laughs> about suffering. And I thought back to when I was like in the first week of COVID, like 15 or 16 months ago, whatever it was. And I have to say to you that I never felt more accompanied than when I was on my bed, having trouble breathing, shaking a little bit, and feverish. I've never felt less alone in my life. I felt the presence of God. I felt my mother and my grandmother. I felt the whole like soul squad that's gathered around all of us at one of the scariest moments of my life. I understood in a very deep way that the way down can be the way up. And then there's the second path, which is the path of love. And these are not mutually exclusive, right? Not mutually exclusive. The path of love is the path that James and John lost sight of when they were busy calling shotgun for the, for the kingdom of God. And we're about to sing the truth of this, that the kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Justice and peace and joy that comes from a place that's not dependent on external circumstances. Or to paraphrase Frank Chan, Frank, where are you? There, somewhere, there you are. There he's in the back, <laughs> probably taking care of something. To paraphrase Frank Chan from a recent meeting, Frank said in this prophetic moment uh, that to him, being a Christian means caring about poor people. Right? Simple. Well, not so simple, but simple. And Richard Rohr put it this way, that Jesus had a bias for the bottom. That Jesus had a bias for the bottom. The way up in the path of love is to reject all the systems that are based on force and domination that we can. I know we live in the real world. If my mom was here, she would say it again. But there's more than just one world. That's the world that Christians should pay more attention to. We should reject all the domination systems we can, the systems that keep the poor poor, and the marginalized, the marginalized. And instead, our attention should be on the world that is trying to break open into this world, into the real world. We should work for a more just world, for a cleaner planet, and for churches and communities that are genuinely and radically inclusive, even if it makes us uncomfortable. Well, whatever good thing happened when we were not uncomfortable first? That's how we grow. And I say this to myself, in addition to us, that I think the path is easier of love when we care less about what other people think of us. If people call us socialists, let them. They call Jesus much worse. If people call this church the gay church, we should be so lucky. If we don't have a bias for the bottom, then what in the world are we doing here? To me, we're not following Jesus because Jesus had a bias for the bottom. The way up for us is the way down. When I was younger, I said and believed a lot of idealistic things and that hasn't changed at all. <laughs> 
hasn't changed at all. I was not wrong to believe them. Now, Jesus knows the world we live in, right? He knows. He was killed by the real world. He absolutely was. But that's why he repeats himself. And it's actually, it's like Taze music, right? We need repetition. It travels from here and slowly, slowly comes down to the heart. Any path has the potential to be the way up. Because Jesus is right. He came not to be served, but to serve. He came away. He came to give his life away. Why? Because everyone is not yet free. Until everyone is free, I think every human, every animal, every plant, until everyone is free, truly free, we are free to live in the real world and we are free to work for the world to come. I'm going to say that again. Jesus came to give away his life because everyone is not yet free. And until everyone is free, truly free, we are free to live in the tension between the real world and the world to come. So may our attention and our intentions be on more than just the real world. May our attention and intentions be focused on the world that's coming. Amen. I just love that we have a little one who's crying. There's nothing like giving a sermon on suffering and hearing it, you know, but also being comforted, being comforted. That's what this is about too. So may we, may we be comforted in the midst of our discomfort and suffering, amen, amen. So Rich, I'm gonna invite you forward to uh, tell us why you give. And everyone say welcome, Rich, welcome. I was gonna say the little one cried as I was about to get up. I think maybe she's read my speech. <laughs> <laughs> when Ralph Bates called me, he asked, he said, speak for a minute. And I think that was really what he was trying to tell me is the KISS principle. Keep it short, short. I'm gonna to try to live to that. Several years ago, my wife and I made a decision. After years of attending Sunday services, serving on committees, taking advantage of Bible studies, even serving in leadership roles, the pledge and pledging an amount that was easily given, we sat down to consider our pledge. Because this church <clears throat> had real meaning for us, we decided that our pledge had to have real meaning. This church meant more than just a building on Pennsylvania Avenue in Niana, Connecticut. It meant the people within its walls. It meant the care we have shown and continue to show for one another when life is at its best and at its worst. It meant the fact that this congregation <clears throat> has always been willing to reach beyond these walls to serve those who need us. A service born from messages we hear on Sunday morning, Bible study, invitations from friends, or communications like Wednesday from the church. We realized that, we realized how significant this church was to our lives. So our pledge needed to reflect that significance. I can't suggest to you what's significant for you. I can only offer you the wisdom of Pastor Landon Lindsay, who was a pastor of this church many years ago. Give, does it feel good? If, it, if not, give some more. <laughs> give until it feels good. 
And I would add to, to Landon's suggestion, Landon's sage advice. One more suggestion. Give via electronic funds transfer. That, that doesn't sound like much of a theological basis, but <laughs> that it, it guarantees the church of a consistent stream of income, as well as for you, it means you don't have to worry about paying your pledge every week. It comes out automatically and it relieves you of that burden. So I hope you will join me in considering how significant this church is to you and allow your pledge to reflect that your decision. Thank you. I'm going to have to steal give until it feels good. <laughs> That's really good. Thank you so much. So if you want to give if, um, over PayPal, you're welcome to do that as well. And thank you to those in the sanctuary who give into our basket. We're going to sing, um, bless the Lord, my soul. And once again, I'm going to invite you to go even deeper. If you don't need to uh, see the screen or look at your bulletin, and if you know the words well enough to just sing, um, so that your heart can be engaged. So let's sing together. You don't have, yeah, you can rise if you want to, sure. Yeah, why not? Bless the Lord, my soul.
Thank you. Let's take a deep breath. And prepare to pray to the God who leads us into life, even if we're at the bottom. And so at this time, if you're um, in the Zoom room, you want to lift up those with whom um, and for whom you're praying. And if you're here in the sanctuary, as loudly as you can, please uh, lift up those before whom you'd like to pray. Betty. For the life of Linda Erickson, we pray we lift her up, her family and friends. Thank you. Neil. Yeah. Prayers for two of your grandsons who were injured um, playing sports two weeks apart. Bless their hearts. Thank you, Georgie. Linda, uh, can we sign this segment to the Ellen Hagen? Not her mouth, until finally we get to heart and kidney. They are going to an awful lot. Yeah. Linda and Ryan. Linda and Ryan, and Ryan is the son? Yes. Okay, so Ryan is waiting in New Haven for organs. And we're praying for um, for Linda and her family and friends who are waiting, probably in excruciating patience. Thank you. Um, we're praying for uh, Dennis to have a full recovery from surgery. Um, Patty, thank you for lifting up your sister-in-law of Daphne and all caregivers. Mary, for those who are facing big life changes and feeling the stress of the real world. Amen. We're giving thanksgiving for the life of a former pastor of ours, Alan Tinkham. Thank you, Paul. We're wishing a happy 40th wedding anniversary to uh, daughter Lori and her husband, Chris. Thank you, Tom. And I neglected to mention that today would have been the, and is the 10th anniversary of Paul Swan's passing. Verna, thank you so much for mentioning him. And you are in our hearts today. Thank you. Who else? Yeah, Peg. We're praying for the American citizens in Haiti, and can we pray for all the folks in Haiti as well? Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. We're going to pray for all those in Afghanistan, but especially the women and girls whose lives have been affected by the Taliban and continue to be so. Thank you. Hands over here, I thought. Yeah, Mary. You're going to have to say that a little bit louder. Mary. We're going to pray for Mary's drawing instructor, Stephen, who's been sick. Thank you for lifting him up, Mary. Thank you. Who else? Yeah, go, please. Thank you, Ralph, for praying for and celebration of the life of a former coworker of yours, Ed. Thank you. Yeah, Jackie. We're praying for the life and gratitude for the life of a, one of your childhood friends. Um, thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you. Yeah, Jen. We're going to be praying for one of your friends um, as her mom um, continues the last stage of her life. She's come home to be in hospice. We pray for a peaceful passing for her and comfort for your friend. Thank you. And Mary's lifting up a prayer for our church and the people whom we impact. Thank you. So let's take a deep breath. One more. As we pray to the God who leads us into life, 
who reminds us that even if we're at the bottom, there's a way out and up. So loving God, here we are with you in community, in the sanctuary, in the sanctuary of the Zoom room. And here we are speaking to all those who may watch on YouTube later. God, this is the real world too. This is the real world too. And so first we lift up those who are in a season of grief, be it long or sudden. And we pray for those who are in a season of one grief after another, one loss after another, for the exhaustion and the soul level fatigue, which could describe all of us in COVID. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, we lift up to you all those in need of healing, which is pretty much everyone in these rooms. But specifically, we lift up these people. We bring them to mind and heart. And we pray, God, in your mercy, to hear our prayers. God, even in the midst of challenges, there are joys to savor. And so we let one of those moments come to mind. For me, it's my nephew dancing to the Beatles together, his little tushy bouncing up and down. I want to hold your hand. Bring to mind your own moment of joy. Let it sink in. God, I want to hold your hand. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up the needs of the world, those that make the headlines and those that don't. We pray that your kingdom might come and that we might have a role to play. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And last but not least, God, we lift up our own names for the sake of our joy today, for Stephanie. And we pray, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And together we pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray for the kingdom of God. We say, our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, amen. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and it's joy and the Holy Spirit, joy that comes not just from ourselves, though it's nice when the joy bubbles up, right? When we put aside our problems for just a minute and feel the joy of being alive. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come Lord and open in us the gates of your kingdom. So please rise in body or spirit. We're gonna to sing together. And the choir is gonna stand and face us. So sing out. Yeah. 
And with your eyes closed, we have been in the region of the heart this morning. The heart has its own power, its own truth. From the heart, we love and live in the world, the real world and the world that is coming. So may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace for each and every precious day of your life. Let the people say amen. Amen. So uh, you might turn to your left. The peace of Christ be with you. And turn to your right. The peace of Christ be with you. And Zoom room. The peace of Christ be with you. And sanctuary. The peace of Christ be with you. We're going to be um, giving um, students their Bibles just outside this morning. So I'm gonna let any parents um, escape the long line <laughs> and, um, and head outdoors. I'll be there as soon as I can. Uh, for the rest of us, we've got a postlude. One more chance to, deep breathe, to do some deep breathing and to listen to music inspiring. So uh, for those who aren't going immediately outside, you can be seated. And let's take one last final deep breath. <laughs> 